All right, everybody, so here's what I wanna do today. I wanna introduce you to our first test, okay? And this is gonna be a test that's a little bit different than, than other things. It's not paper and pencil so much as it's you being able to show me that you know what to do with all the stuff that we've learned before. So I like to call this the bounceativity challenge. And yes, I made up that word, okay? But the big idea here is we are using data to make predictions. All right, so we're gonna put into practice all those things that we've learned. So here's the challenge, all right? You're gonna use data that you've collected to predict how high a ball will bounce when dropped from a randomly chosen height. So here's, think about it like this. Okay, so here's a, here's a this is a golf ball. And if I take this golf ball and I drop, hold it up here and I drop it, it bounces, right? Okay, well, if I hold it at a different height, is it gonna bounce the same height as before? Well, I'm thinking it might be a little bit different depending on the, or the bounce height might be a little different depending on the how high I hold it. So is there a relationship there? That's what you've gotta figure out. So what you're gonna need is you're gonna need a ball that bounces really easily. Now I know some of you are, are at home, some of you are here. Um, you use whatever you have at your disposal, okay? I've found that a golf ball tends to work the best. Um, if you don't have a golf ball, a tennis ball, a basketball, anything that will, when it hits the ground, it'll bounce. You need a flat, hard surface, okay? So something that doesn't have a lot of bumps on it, something where when the, when the ball hits, it's not gonna go flying off in, in one direction. So flat, hard surface um, that you can use consistently. Then you're gonna need some kind of ruler or measuring tape. All right, um, so those of you who are at, at school, um, you can use a meter stick. Um, if you're at home, no problem. You can use a yard stick. You can use a, uh, uh, one of those measuring tapes. Whatever, whatever you have um, will, will work as long as you can be consistent with it. And then you're gonna need to find a way to record the bounce height. What we've found is that if you use your iPad, um, and put it on the slow-mo video setting, that that helps a lot. It makes it a lot easier to, uh, to get everything figured out. Oh, there's a, a text for me. Anyways, um, yeah, so you're gonna need to have a way to, to record the bounce height. Now, here's what you're gonna do. Remember, we are trying to figure out how to, um, or like how the bounce height will change depending on the, the, the height that I hold it. So the fir very first thing you do after you've got all your materials all set up is you're gonna design your procedure, all right? Um, so you're gonna need to say, you know what, step one, I need to do this. Step two, I need to do this. So think back to the competency when we were talking about designing uh, procedures and, and how to set that up in a way that it goes sequentially and detailed enough for people to follow you. Now, here's the trick. All the testing you do can only be done from one meter and below, or one yard and below, all right? No going up and above, that'd be cheating, all right? Set up your experiment, do it. Record your data. Um, when you finish collecting your data, here's what's gonna happen. You're gonna say, hey, Mr. Spencer, I've got all this data, um, I'm ready to, to get my, um, my random drop heights. And I'm gonna say, hey, send me your stuff. I wanna take a look at it. And then when we've got the thumbs up, I'm gonna give you two heights, okay? Drop height A is gonna be somewhere between one or the ground and one meter or one yard. Drop height B is gonna be somewhere between 1.5 and two meters or one and a half and two yards. Use the data that you've collected before and the graph and the y equals mx plus b and, and go and predict how high you think that ball is going to bounce from drop height A and from drop height B. Then we're gonna test it. We're gonna test your prediction to see just how accurate your data is in being able to predict what's gonna happen. All right, the closer the actual bounce height is to the predicted bounce height, better your grade's gonna be. Now, one of these things is I have, uh, in Schoology, I have a checklist. So these are some of the things that I'm gonna be looking for in your documentation. All right, so 
I want to see that it's organized, that it's easy to follow. I want to see that your question that you write down, which I've already given you, uh, that it tests the comparison between two variables, our independent variable and our dependent variable. I want to see a, a picture or a sketch of what you're, what you're doing. Um, you're going to have the independent and dependent variables that need to be identified. You're going to need to identify the constants. You're going to need to make sure that when you set up your experiment design, that you are stre you're doing as many different samples as possible. Now, I'm not talking about trials. I'm talking about samples. So think of how many different drop heights you could do to test this. Because remember, we're trying to make a graph and find that y equals mx plus b equation for the line so that we can make um, that, that prediction. Uh, you need to write out your procedure. I want to know like step one, do this, step two, do this, step three, do this. And the more detail, the better. Looking over here, these are some of the things that we're going to do on the, that I'm going to be looking for on your data tables and graphs. When it comes to your data interpretation, being able to use that graph in the equation, these are the kind of things that I'm going to, to be looking for. All right, so there's a copy of that that's attached in, in Schoology. But here's how your grading is going to be. All right, it's going to be 100 points. I mean, this is a test, right? It's going to be 60 points for documenting your experiment. Okay, all of these things you know exactly before you get started or before you finished what your grade should be. All right, so that's going to be in there. And then next, 40 points for how close your prediction is to the actual test height. All right. So I'm hoping that uh, that explains it. Let me know if you have any questions, and I'll be happy to help you out. Talk to you soon.